So this problem was easier than I realized. I thought that the temperatures were different. However, on rereading it, I realized 25 degrees Celsius is the same as 298 Kelvin because 25 plus 273 is equal to 298. But it was an intentional method to try to throw me off and I just read it too quickly. When temperatures are constant, so in this case temp is constant and the moles is constant, if we write the equation PV is equal to K N or N R T instead of K, since the R is constant for both situations and the moles are constant and the temperature is constant, Okay, here's how to look at it. PV is equal to NRT. R is the constant. If I divide both sides by NT, I get this. Both in the first system are equal to a constant. This is how they pretty much came up with all of these rules. Which means that in the first system, it's equal to K. And then in the adjusted system, let's call it P2, or I'll just color the thing different. In the second system, the pressure times the volume over NT will also equal K. Since they both are equal to K, you can say that the first system is going to be equal to the constant, known as R, by the way. The constant is R. I just call it K for constant. So we should really just call it R if I want to be technical. But they're both equal to the constant. Since they're both equal to the constant R, you can say that the first system and the second system will be equal in terms of adding and dividing all their values. This is where they come up with these puzzles. Well, in this situation, since it's a closed system, when I open the hydrogen, it's going to escape into the other chamber. And when I open the uh, nitrogen, it's going to escape into the other chamber. But this, the only thing that changes here is the volume and therefore the pressure. The moles are the same and they've kept the temperature the same even though they tried to trick us. Which means, since these things are the same on each side of the equation, you can always just get rid of them. That's the nature, because you're just going to be multiplying and dividing by the same thing. And that's where they came up with Boyle's Law. The pressure times the volume in one system will be equal to the pressure and the volume once we open the valves. Now, it's complicated to think because you think, oh, won't these things, when they open, just kind of ram into each other? Well, that's the nature of gases. The molecules are actually so ridiculously spaced out, like the stars and planets in the universe, that the molecules of one will simply pass through the other. And we'll get to the C in a second of why that's not true uh, in a second. But they will pass through each other. Ideal gases assume three things, that there's no reaction between the, inter, uh, the molecules themselves, that all uh, encounters are perfectly elastic, which means when atoms do hit, they bounce back with the same force and the same speed, which keeps the heat the same. And uh, there's a third criteria. You have to look up ideal gases. In reality, almost nothing is ideal. And they also discovered at high or at low, low pressure, like space, and at high, high temperature, ideal gases start, start to not hit uh, react or be predictable in the ideal gas law, but since most of the things we're working with are in moderate temperature and moderate pressure, it works fine as a system. Later on, they introduce extra values to adjust for real reality, but in this case, we just assume the molecules pass through each other easily. In that case, the best thing for you to do is just assume that hydrogen, when it first opens its valve, escapes into an empty, escapes into an empty system. So we, all we do is we look at our hydrogen. Well, we know that the hydrogen, when it starts, is 5 liters at 102, and we can skip the temperature. <coughs> Which means the pressure when it starts is 102, and the volume is 5. Now let me ask you this. If this is a 5 liter uh, container, and this is a 2.5 liter container, what's the total volume? 
So obviously the addition of these volumes, excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> the addition of these volumes is 5 plus 2.5, which means the total volume of this space is 7.5. If I open up my hydrogen to escape, it's going to fill a new volume of 7.5. So that's the other trick of these things, is to realize, oh, it's an addition of the two volumes. So if that's its initial uh, volume given as 5, and that's the initial pressure given as 102, the final volume here is going to be 7.5. We just don't know the red P. So now filling in the black and the red, we can do it like this. Well, I know the initial pressure was given as 102. And yes, you should always keep your uh, um, units. And then they will cancel. And the initial volume was 5 liters. And you should keep your significant digits. And we don't know the new pressure, but we do know the new volume. Which means if I divide on both sides, by the way, this will be 510 kilopascals liters. If I divide by both sides by 7.5, and this is, oh, see, I forgot to write liters up here liters is going to be equal to the new pressure. Pretty easy to understand. Now the trick of the total pressure system is we have to calculate the individual pressures before we can do that. Notice that the liters cancel out and we're left with the units kilopascals which makes sense because we're dealing with pressure. So all I have to do is take 510 and divide it by 7.5. And I get this, 68 kilopascals is the partial pressure. And again, 68 kilopascals is the partial pressure of hydrogen. And we can just call that partial pressure, pressure one. Then we just do the same for the nitrogen. And we're just going to assume it escapes into an empty chamber. And of course, the combined volume is, again, 7.5 liters. And we notice from the question that the initial volume and the initial pressure is this. And we use our same item because everything else is constant. That's the point of Boyle's Law, that everything else is held constant. Temperature, moles, and the constant R. And we get this. Well, I know that the initial pressure was 85 kilopascals. And the initial volume was 2.5 liters. I don't know the new pressure. But I know the new volume. So that means if I multiply this, I'm going to get 85 times 2.5. And it's going to be kilopascals liters and all divided by 7.5 liters, and that's just a calculator work, is all going to be equal to my new pressure. So essentially, I got P all alone by dividing both sides by 7.5 liters. So I get 85 times 2.5 is going to be that, and then I divide it by 7.5, the new volume of the system, and I get this, 28.33 repeating, which means the pressure, partial pressure, of nitrogen is equal to that. And notice that the liters cancel, and I'm left with kilopascals as a unit. That's why you keep the units around, just to make sure you did the right cancellations. Well, this is partial pressure, too. And Dalton's law, so now we've done A. Notice that you figured out A when we did this one. And now we do we figured out two, but they don't ask us about the pressure for nitrogen. They ask us in B, what's the total pressure? Well, here's where we do Dalton's law, which says the total pressure is equal to the sum of all partial pressures. Well, there's only two partial pressures here. There's the pressure from uh, the nitrogen, 28.3 kilopascals, and the pressure from the uh, hydrogen, which we discovered was 68 kilopascals. And that's how Dalton's Law works. We just add them. We 
get 96.333 kilopascals. Now at this stage, I would look back at my units, my significant units, and I'd notice I have two. Uh, that doesn't count because that's an exact figure, but that's two, that's three, that's three, and that's two. So the small significant figure is two. So we get 96 kilopascals would be our answer. Now we can go to three. Well, sometimes you ask what can be improved. Well, what can be improved is three significant digits. But three, why might this situation not be ideal? Well, first, molecules will interact. Second, normally if this was a low pressure system, it's kind of getting to a low pressure system. It means zero is low pressure. It's not quite, but lower pressure reduces the ideal system. This is not a particular high temperature, it's 25 degrees Celsius, but higher pressure would reduce an ideal situation. But why might not this situation be ideal? The other factor is nitrogen and hydrogen will react to a small extent because their reaction curves will have a small bit here that hits activation energy. And you will get a little bit of NH3 created, which means the molarity will change because the formula for N plus N, H plus N, will not be an equal molarity, that two and two, and we need three, so it's probably gonna be three of these and two of these, and it's probably gonna create uh, like two NH3. So the molarities will change. So that's another reason there will be reaction. And there you go, that's the system. You just assume each one's empty on the other side to understand it. In reality, their gases are spaced out so far that they don't really intermix except there will be some NH3 created.